Okay, class, um, today we're going to start talking about this idea of the novel The Great Gatsby. Normally I do the literary introductions in class, um, but this time I am not um, doing to trying to save us some time. When I introduce this in class, it usually takes about an hour, and doing this by video, I only have 15 minutes. Um, so we're going to talk about The Great Gatsby. Um, Take notes, lots and lots of notes with this, because most of the video itself and the Prezi are just pictures. So I'm going to give you a lot of information to go with this. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is our author. His name is Francis Scott Fitzgerald. Here it's listed as F. Scott. Um, F is stands for Francis. Um, his family, he was born in 1896 um, in Minnesota to very upper class family, a very typical upper class family in Minnesota. So um, his dad and mom both had inherited money. His dad had also made money of his own. Um, F. Scott was uh, educated um, at very prestigious um, schools, um, boarding schools in um, New Jersey. He was very Catholic, very much had that upper class typical aspect of the time period. Um, he died in 1940 of a heart attack. Um, so yes, he was very young, um, of 44 years old when he passed away. Um, in his early 20s, after graduating college, um, he had been commissioned into the army and had started training for World War I. Um, but that became a problem when the war ended in 1918. So he never actually fought. He was never actually deployed or sent over. So he actually ended his commission and um, ended up writing his first novel. His first novel was published in 1920. Um, and because it was actually such a success right off, people were kind of surprised that this 24-year-old guy could actually write. Um, especially fresh out of college, fresh out of the military, um, upper class family and all of that stuff. So um, he actually, a week after publishing his book, um, had gotten, um, had married. Um, his wife's name is Zelda. You see a picture of her here. This is him. This is their daughter. Um, but Zelda is, um, I'm not sure why it keeps doing that. Um, Zelda and he met in 1918 when he was um, training in the military and they fell in love but he felt like he couldn't really get married until he had started to make his own way so a week after he had published his first novel he actually um, got married to her um, she has a very troubled life even though they are married for 20 years before he had passed away she did outlive him but not by much longer um, she was very, had a lot of mental issues, um, and through most of the 1930s, she spent time in mental hospitals. Um, they thought that she was either schizophrenic or that she was bipolar. Today, she would have lived a very different lifestyle um, versus back then, because now we know how to treat both of those. Um, they had one daughter, um, rather quickly after getting married, had the daughter. Um, her name is also Frances Scott Fitzgerald because she's a, bo a girl and not a boy. Um, they actually call her Scotty, and he didn't name her Junior because she's a girl. Um, but very much lived this typical upper class, um, inherited money, make your own money lifestyle. Um, they lived most of their life between France and America and specifically New York City. And we'll talk about, um, the idea of France in a few minutes. Um, when he passed away, he passed away in Hollywood. Um, since Zelda was in the hospital, he was free to live more of where he wanted to. Um, so he actually moved to Hollywood to write scripts. Um, but when he passed away suddenly at 44 years old, dying of a heart attack, um, he very much viewed his life as being a failure um, because he didn't have a lot of commercial success for the time period. Um, part of that commercial success um, was due to the fact that he didn't write as much as he could um, or should have, but a lot of that came from dealing with a wife who um, had some mental issues and also fighting his own bouts of alcoholism and depression. His success really didn't come until, I mean, he did, he had some success while he was alive, but most of his success didn't come until the 50s and the 60s. Okay, looking at the time period, 
We're specifically going to look at the Roaring Twenties and the Jazz Age. This is 1920s. Um, the next several slides are just pictures. So again, taking notes of what I'm saying to go along with it is important. So we're going to look first of all at this idea of prohibition. In 1908, um, Congress had passed the Prohibition Act, and this um, basically made it illegal to um, produce and drink alcohol in the United States. Um, this was led specifically by women who, um, women and Christians who very much thought the alcohol was um, influencing society in a wrong way, um, taking away from the Christian lifestyle. Um, and this gets repealed later in, um, I think it's like 20, 25 years after the fact that it finally gets repealed, but it definitely does uh, affect our novel itself. Um, we also have what we call clubs. Um, Cotton Club is a very famous one in New York at the time period. Um, Cotton Club, because it was in the middle of prohibition, couldn't serve alcohol legally. So in the front of the club, you heard jazz music and you saw a lot of dancing. But if you got to the right door in the back of the club, um, you could actually go through and there was a bar, uh, a bartender and alcohol, which was very common for the time period. Um, this is the flapper attire. Um, and you see all four women basically wearing the same style of clothing, um, dresses just above the knee, shirts that are sleeveless, their heads are still, um, have some type of, um, attire on them, either a headband or a hat. Um, you see jewelry and necklaces, um, there are other pictures where the jewelry is more prominent, and heels. Um, and they're dancing here, a uh, dance called the Charleston, which is very, it's one of the most popular dances of the time period. Um, and then here, jazz music. Jazz music is very popular, very upbeat, very move and bounce to it, very popularized by um, the African American community. So the Roaring Twenties um, with the Jazz Age definitely goes hand in hand um, because the dancing and the partying a lot is done to the jazz music itself. We also have during this time period the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance is this um, increase within artistic stuff and influences within the African-American community. So poetry, novels, um, portraits, um, sculptures, anything artistic, but their influence definitely increasing. Harlem is one of the main five boroughs or districts within New York City itself, which is mainly inhabited by African-Americans. Um, noticing the head attire here, she's very upper class. Um, if looking at the um, beads, and the sparkly um, diamond aspects to her headpiece. Um, this cover here is a very famous cover of Life magazine. Noticing her necklace um, is actually moving as she's dancing, noticing him dressed in a complete tuxedo. Um, they're definitely dressed up and they're both dancing the Charleston. Now, moving away from this idea of the Roaring Twenties and the Jazz Age, we have this idea of what we call expatriate. Um, expatriate is a person who lives outside their native country, um, or an archaic definition here is someone who's been exiled from their native country. Um, usually someone who chooses to live outside of their native country does so for certain reasons. During the 1920s and 30s, um, there was a very big literary movement um, where a lot of poets and novelists moved to France specifically because they were disenfranchised by what was going on in America, um, by the idea that they couldn't have their alcohol, um, they also, the whole idea of the stock market and the um, Great Depression didn't help. Um, so they spent a lot of their time in France, specifically London too, but more so in France. Um, and this idea is that they lived there and uh, lived very much that upper class French life, but they still wrote about American ideas and American values and American themes. Um, so they just didn't necessarily feel like they wanted to live in America at that time period. Um, Fitzgerald and his wife Zelda both live this lifestyle. Um, in fact, Gatsby was written while he lived in France. And a lot of 
what goes on in his personal life you actually see within the novel itself i'm not going to tell you what happens in his personal life um that goes on within the novel because i don't want to ruin the novel for you okay um looking at this idea of the great gatsby itself so looking at the novel um we are set in new york city um in the very early 1920s um, specifically over one summer in the 1920s. Um, this is a map of, of part of New York that shows up within the novel itself. Um, the Plaza Hotel is one of our main settings, and it's on the island of Manhattan. Um, and then the main aspect of the book, though, will happen out here um, in what we call, what would today would normally be called Long Island. Um, West Egg and East Egg, which would be here. Um, I will give you maps within class within the next couple of days that I'm actually going to have you label and mark on so that you can see some things and have some things for um, the book itself. And the Valley of Ashes um, is an area that's very desolate that you have to travel through to get from Long Island into Manhattan. So these um, lines you actually see are actually the um, train routes. Okay, we have this idea of West Egg, noticing the cracked egg, the baby coming out of it. We have the East Egg, the old egg um, aspect. So the, wet, the people who live in West Egg, remembering the map there is important of Long Island. You have the new rich, the flashy, these are the mansions um, alongside small modest homes. Nick is our narrator. Um, you see his name here. He has a very small modest home that we'll see described in chapter one. Um, that is very much beside all of these mansions. These modest homes are being torn down and mansions are being built along, um, alongside these modest homes um, because people are getting new money, specifically from the stock market. Um, East Egg is our old rich, our refined, our lavish um, polo courts, um, tennis courts, swimming pools, inherited money from their parents. Most of these people don't even work. Um, all of this, East Egg and West Egg, um, it centers around this idea of an economic boom. We know about the um, stock market crash in 1929. We know about the Great Depression. Well, all before it, we have these materialistic, greedy, differing values, this old money versus this new money, and these people just don't meld because of those differences within that economic aspect. Okay, now we're going to look at the novel. Um, this is fiction. So we're going to look at and starting to prepare you for next year, which is AP literature, which is all fiction and poetry. So I do have to throw one fiction novel in this year to kind of help you in that preparation process. So main things we're going to look at is this idea of plot. We're going to look at the plot diagram, rising action, climax, resolution aspects, but because this is an AP class, we're not just looking at the surface of the novel itself. We're actually going to go below the surface, and we're going to look at the complexities of the narrative itself, very much focusing on the idea of thematic and literary elements. So we're going to look at similes, metaphors, alliteration, imagery, symbols, and themes, be prepared for those symbols, people. I have tons of them from this novel and love, love, love to test on symbols. We all know the definition of a theme is the underlying meaning of a literary work. The main theme that we're going to look at is this idea of the American dream. Now, um, looking at this cartoon, um, the American dream specifically um, consists of a contemporary lifestyle. So a house, a fence, house in the suburbs. This is where we get the idea of the house with a white picket fence, 2.5 kids in a minivan, culture and recreation, healthcare and security. The only problem is you need to actually add money. So this is what our American dream looked like back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Husband and wife, wife stays home, she cooks, she cleans, takes care of the kids, very much the leave it to beaver aspect. But this is what our American dream looks like today how our society has greatly changed. We're going to look at and talk about this idea of the changed American dream in class and talk about do we really think it's over or not. So I would take some notes on that because that's going to be one of the main things we discuss tomorrow. Um, we're also going to look at this idea of money and how it plays into that idea of the American dream itself. 
Um, have a great night. Make sure you answer the questions. Make sure you check your notes. And I'll see you in class tomorrow. And also, don't forget to bring your books with you.